Number 10, Contractor. A former NASA contractor went on video to reveal the fact that NASA has been keeping secrets from us. She says she both viewed and heard evidence that three NASA astronauts said that they had seen unidentified flying objects land on the moon, but that these events were later covered up in an operation that was codenamed Santa Claus. A fitting name as NASA wants you to believe that UFOs are just about as real as Santa. She says that she had clearance to enter buildings eight at NASA's Johnson Space Center back in the 1970s. She says that she received information over lunch from officials that if anyone was ever caught exposing aliens as real, they would lose their pensions, and apparently one person in the past had not only lost their pension, but had disappeared off the face of the earth. In the video, she said, They didn't threaten to kill me, but I got the message I shouldn't talk about it. She apparently witnessed everything from employees being forced to burn photographic evidence and seeing official pictures being airbrushed to hide UFOs. Number 9. The Kecksburg File On the night of December 9th, 1965, a giant fireball which caused a sonic boom streaked across the sky before crashing into the woods in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Military immediately arrived and sealed off the area, hauling off a massive object the size of a bus to their Air Force base nearby in Ohio. The Pentagon immediately tried to cover it up, saying it was a meteorite, releasing no details about the incident. But in 2003, NASA went on to say that it was not a satellite, but two years later in 2005 they said, yeah, actually it was a satellite, just don't worry about it. The cover up seemed never ending, and it just led more and more people to become interested in finding out the truth of the Kecksburg file. A Freedom of Information Act was then started to get the file looked into again, and the judge threw away NASA's attempts to have the lawsuit thrown out. So in 2007 they announced they would be reopening the Kecksburg file but they claimed that a majority of the files had been destroyed or lost, and they never released what it actually was that crashed that day. Number 8. Astronaut Like I said in the first point, there is allegedly a conspiracy within NASA to cover up any of their employees or former employees talking about the fact that they have had alien experiences. But as I have mentioned in other parts of this list, there are actually a handful of astronauts who have spoken out about potentially alien encounters. Leland Melvin is probably best known for taking his astronaut photos with his rescued dogs, but what you're probably not familiar with is the fact that he has shared his alien experiences on Twitter. He received a question on Twitter that read, What's your outlook about the existence of intelligent alien life living in our solar system? Have you ever witnessed a UFO? And Leland went on to respond with, I have not seen one in space or on the ground, but thought I saw something organic slash alien-like floating out of the payload bay. Randy Bresnik and I called the ground to ask what it could be, and they said it was ice that had broken off of the Freon hoses. Translucent, curved, organic looking, with an alien emoji at the end. Of course, he explains it by saying it was just ice, but that was probably just NASA feeding them an easy cover up. Number 7, Moon Crash. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is similar to the Mars Orbiter that I have talked about before. It basically watches over the moon and takes pictures of its surface. Earlier this year, they released a photo that had many people scratching their heads and insisting that NASA was doing yet another cover-up. The photo shows the surface of the moon with what is called a double impact crater. While the moon is covered in tons of craters, this one is unique for this reason. The evidence of the dozens of feet wide indentation seems to show that some sort of man-made spaceship crashed into the moon and left the divot. Many people on social media believe this to be evidence that some sort of alien craft had hit the moon, but NASA tried to shut everyone up by claiming claiming it was just an out of control rocket. While they seemed to know it was a rocket, they admitted that they don't have any idea where it came from or what its original path was intended to be. So even if it's not aliens, it's still pretty confusing. Number 6. Alien Photo Mars is one of the main planets that many people believe could be host to aliens. Hence the term Martians and all the fictitious media that includes alien creatures visiting from Mars. On February 4th of this year, one person online dug up a photo that the Perseverance rover had taken on Mars back in 2021. The title of the blog post being, Alien Figure Watching Mars Rover, 100% Proof of Life UFO Sighting News. The image seems to show a dark figure laying on a large Martian rock. It's distinctly human shaped and darkly colored and stands out from anything else in the area or what we've seen in previous pictures. The man explains in his blog post everything that he believes it to be. There is a person laying down watching 
the NASA Mars rover from a safe distance away. The person is about 1 foot tall, 0.3 meters, and is lying down. Pinkish upper chest, neck, and face, reddish hair, wearing a dark suit, but has a gray object over one shoulder. Looks like a backpack of some sort. There are even footprints behind the person leading up to the location they chose to lay down at. If you don't agree with that, then what do you think it could be? Number five, a mua mua. This one here has scientists and Reddit users all fighting alike. So just a few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system and they called it a mua mua. It was widely agreed upon that it was an interstellar comet that had somehow swung out from another star and ended up near us at a very high velocity. But upon closer examination, they realized that something was propelling this and causing it to accelerate. And this is when the debate started. A.B. Loeb, who is a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail. A light sail is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that could be accelerating this, you know, space cigar. Other scientists didn't agree with this. Fair, I mean more than fair. And instead, they believed that this is possibly the hydrogen ice could have been melting off the object in a way that would mimic a rocket or something that can propel it in nature. But in August of last year, AB wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before this, long before it reached our solar system. So really don't know what's propelling this massive space cigar. So we think aliens. Do I think aliens? Maybe, I don't know, I'll never tell. Number four, Flaming Thing, Texas. I just watched Nope the other day and the idea of aliens in Texas or aliens over top of a farm, you know that birthday party scene with the dude walking, it always gives me chills, I don't like it. Aliens love a good crop, apparently. Imagine opening the newspaper though in 1957 and right on the front cover you read, Levelin Flaming Thing brings world knocking at city's door. What does that even mean? What do I, how do I react to that? Back in 1957 in, of course, Levelin, Texas, multiple eyewitness reports began to flood in about an egg-shaped object, again, an egg-shaped object, or this circular flash of light. It was just jetting across Levelin skies. One witness recalls the object making a loud humming noise as it flew by, which is different than other accounts that we've heard about, you know, flying eggs in history. But this egg shape keeps coming back up. But this is an encounter where it's been reported as loud with a great rush of wind, which is, again, very different. Believable, but different. It was a loud egg, as opposed to a quiet sea egg. On top of that claim, the witness's car radio began to go haywire as it passed. The radio thing isn't too crazy. I mean, growing up, my computer speakers would always tell me if a text was going to come in. So I was so odd. I have no idea how that works still to this day. The Air Force ended up commenting on it. They said that this was just a phenomenon caused by electrical storms and not a space egg passing by. But do we buy that? Is that why we're here right now watching this video on Most Amazing Top 10? Giving it a thumbs up, subscribing? We want to believe in aliens, right? Let's do it, let's move on, almost there. Number three, Europa. One of Jupiter's many moons called Europa has a red tinge to it. And in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that this tinge, this little might be possible that alien microbes are responsible for this reddish color. Again, we saw life way out in the galaxy that was also a faint red. So red means dead? I don't know, red means alive? Who knows? The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and or compounds to make that data make any sense. But like something's red and there's life. Well, I don't know. I don't know how science works. That's my best uh, impersonation of science people. Uh, there's some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions and that also have that red and brown color, which could potentially be responsible for this color on the moon, sort of space bacteria, ice bacteria, whatever. There's something living up there. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where these are all located. Some geological activity on the moon could push them closer to the surface where they then flash frozen in place. So they're warm under the water, then they go and they freeze. That's a horrible way to go out. A little space bacteria. Number two, O'Hare Airport. A UAP spotted in the airport. Worst place to see it, in my opinion. I sure it wasn't an airplane. Heard there's a few over there. The day was November 7th and the year was 2006. Flight 446 was gearing up with passengers and luggage, of course, ready to fly to North Carolina from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. But the flight was a tad delayed due to the, you know, due to the hovering metallic craft hovering above all the planes. Yeah, can't really take off when that shiny ball is in the way. 12 United employees and others were just there to fly out. It was 4.15 p.m., so it wasn't at midnight. Nobody was tired, nobody was delirious. It was clear as day. It was a business day, otherwise. And everyone saw this. Witnesses watched it hover for around five
five minutes before it eventually zipped off back into the sky. It even pushed through clouds, so people say it wasn't a balloon. This report was one of the most read stories on the Chicago Tribune's website. I mean, of course, it's about aliens. But eventually, it was deemed a weather phenomenon, because why, of course it was, wasn't it? The UFO was not seen on the radar, or any radar for that matter, so now we're just gonna go off what people said that many years ago. Although last week, we saw three balloons and have no idea what they were, so we'll never find out at this rate. And finally, number one, 2021 UFO. February 21st, 2021, a blogger was using a radio scanner to try and pick up the feed from an aircraft, but they received much more than they ever expected. They intercepted the transmission of the wrong aircraft, but at the right time, it seems. As an American Airlines flight was headed from Cincinnati to Phoenix around 1.20 p.m., the pilot came on the radio to ask a question. Do we have any targets up here? Also, what an odd question to ask while you're flying. The voice continued. We just had something go right over top of us. Now, after this, he followed up with, I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast over top of us flying. Yeah, not, not where you want to see anything in the air around you. You don't want to see anything that looks like that in the air. No, that's so scary. Not only were FAA air traffic controllers not able to see any object in the area on their radar scope, but they still haven't been able to identify what that could have been. Just a rogue something flying by. Nice, that's calming. Glad I went flying yesterday. This does happen more often than any of us really know. Like I said, we had three balloons pop up and we have no idea where half of them went or what happened to them. But it's possible this object could have been part of some sort of covert military or Navy operation, but it certainly raises some alarm bells. We don't want to do any tests beside a, a swoosh airline. Probably not dangerous. Uh, dangerous? Probably not safe. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number eight, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like, look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow, a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now, apparently, he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our seventh spot, we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway. That's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. 
Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. Number 5. Mercury UFO Project Mercury was NASA's first ambitious space mission which took place back in the early 1960s, which included six manned space flights. But that isn't what we're going to be focusing on. One of the Mercury probes sent out into space took a picture of what appears to clearly be a UFO. A photo that a NASA blogger found in an old disc from the mission that took place in December 1960 appears to show a strange shape that looks like it could be an alien spacecraft. While many arguments against UFOs are that they're just random space junk, this was at the beginning of NASA's steps out into space, so there really couldn't have been that many rocket pieces and broken panels floating around. The blogger says that he believes this is aliens wanting to watch one of humanity's biggest steps, not worrying about being seen because this particular craft didn't actually have any humans on it. Number 4. Deleted UFO This same blogger also recently found evidence of NASA purposefully covering up and deleting archival photos that appear to show evidence of aliens. He found a photo of what appears to be a large, dark, rectangular alien ship flying past the sun, and he also found that NASA is trying to hide it. On his blog, he said, I found a huge rectangle UFO shooting past our sun, and it's got to be several miles across or more. I tried to find it on another NASA site, but I got an error message. Then I tried using official European Space Administration software, and again, error message. Then I went into the individual photos online and input my own URL, but these photo times do not exist. That's three different sources all erased from existence. I found it at a fourth source. He says that he won't reveal this other source as he doesn't want it taken down as well. There are 20 different photos in a row that all show the unidentified craft and he calls NASA out for never saying anything about it. Number 3. Mars Photos I talked about this on a separate list, but I also wanted to touch on it here too. We've taken a look at one Mars rover photo already, but I want to dive into just how many of these there are. People are constantly picking out unexplained and potentially alien things popping up in these photos of the red planet. One of the most baffling recent images is this one that appears to show some sort of carved out entryway which people believe must lead to some sort of alien hideout on the planet, looking too precise to have been caused by natural weather and environment conditions like NASA claims. There have also been many rocks that appear to be much more than just rocks as they stand out from anything else in the photos, almost looking like a sort of coral growing out from the ground through the dust. There are a lot of them and NASA has attempted to explain away all these photos, but there is still just a lot of mystery there. Number 2. The Calvine Photo This one is similar to the Kecksburg file in the way that it is also a UFO encounter from many decades ago that NASA tried to hide away by claiming it was lost. The photo was taken in August 1990 by two hikers near Calvine in Scotland. It shows what is clearly a large diamond shaped vessel flying through the sky, being trailed by another airplane. They took pictures and said it appeared to be about 30 meters long. It apparently then shot straight up into the sky and disappeared, never to be seen again. The photo was first given to the newspaper and then handed over to the Ministry of Defense, and then it was never discussed again and the photo apparently went missing. In October of 2021, one, the Scottish Operations Records book was checked and there was no account of anything having been spotted in the sky on that day. One determined individual, however, managed to track down the lost photo and about it they said, The Calvine photograph stands as one of the biggest mysteries in UFO history. Finally revealed after 32 years, it shows that answers only bring new questions. 
Number one, space nudes. In May of this year, it was revealed to the public that NASA was going to be sending a message out to aliens, calling it the beacon in the galaxy. It's a binary coded message that includes details about our planet and human life that is going to be shot into space for anybody to find. One of these images was revealed to be an image of what a genetically male and female human look like, and yes, it has all the details. It also includes a diagram of gravity so aliens know which part of us is the top and which is the bottom. Other images included are the solar system diagram, a map of Earth's land mass, and depictions of things like mountains and trees. So yes, NASA is actually sending our nudes out to space. The fact that they are doing this shows that at least a small part of the organization believes that aliens are out there to receive this message. Coming into number 10, we have up close and personal with Area 51. In September 2017, YouTube channel UFO Seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tikaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water towers. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. Coming in at number nine, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming into number eight, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticized the response to the Freedom of Information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from very high in the sky. From browsing Google, around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to intel from the website Life Science, though, it is thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. Coming into number seven, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived? Or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. All right, coming into number six, this is the big one. It is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1990 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous, obviously. Let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called 
Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51, taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long, or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. What do you think though? Is Boyd telling the truth? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have exoplanets. One of the first things spoken about in the 12 minute long anonymous video is that around 25 years ago, we didn't know that planets existed outside of our solar system. While that seems hard to believe, that is actually basically true, keeping in mind that this video was released in 2017. The first exoplanets, which are what planets outside of our solar system are called, were discovered in 1992, which is super recently. The video then goes on to explain that today we have found Found over 3,400 exoplanets that orbit other suns. This may seem redundant or unimportant, but this is a really important part of our search for alien life. With the vastness of space, there are so many places that need to be searched, so we have to find some place to start, and these planets are the perfect place. It is entirely possible that alien life may thrive off of entirely different things than life as we know it. The things we need to survive might be detrimental to alien life, but how are we supposed to know that when 
when we don't know any aliens. This is why we started our search by looking for places with conditions similar to Earth, which we now call habitable planets. Part of a habitable planet's requirements is that they are orbiting a star, but that they aren't too close or too far from it like we are with the sun. So what the video is trying to get across is that while 25 years ago we didn't know any, we now know of thousands of planets that might be holding some kind of alien life. While we haven't found the proof yet, we at least have a pretty stellar starting point. In our number 9 spot today we have Dr. Brian O'Leary. One thing Anonymous mentioned in the video was an apparent quote from Dr. Brian O'Leary, who's a former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor. The video stated that he said that there is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been monitoring us for a very long time, and that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional, materialistic, western point of view, and that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use droids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, which seems to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. I obviously have no idea how I could possibly substantiate these claims, but they certainly are interesting regardless of what you personally believe. This could of course just be nonsense in order to stir up the masses, but it could also be someone who's finally telling us the truth, but we're all just too skeptical at this point to believe it. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of what Dr. O'Leary said. Do you think it's a hunk of baloney, or do you think that he just might be telling the truth? In our number 8 spot today we have the FBI documents. Around the halfway mark the person in the anonymous video begins to discuss some sort of FBI documents that are apparently unclassified just sitting there on the website. The video claims that the documents suggest that we've not only been visited by aliens from space, but also beings from other dimensions. The video does explain that the document didn't originate from within the FBI, but rather from a university department head, but that the FBI treated the document with the utmost importance importance, which is certainly interesting. It's also very important to note however that this document was sent in 1947. I'm not sure if that makes the claims more or less likely or credible, but the timing of it definitely seems important, at least to me. While this is one of those things that you have to draw your own conclusions from, in the video it is mentioned that while we are arguing whether or not supposed UFO or alien sightings have really taken place here on earth or in space, there are real instances of extraterrestrial beings visiting visiting us, but we're just too focused on the debate to open our eyes and see for ourselves. In our number 7 spot today we have esoteric matters. After the discussion of the FBI documents, there is a claim that these beings that have apparently been visiting us are coming not from a planet as we think of it, but rather some sort of etheric planet that interpenetrates with our own, but that we are unable to perceive. Apparently if you're a student of esoteric matters these concepts will make a lot more sense to you, or so this anonymous video claims. Apparently these alien beings are able to make a conscious decision to enter our plane, and in that same respect they are also to make a decision to disappear from our view. Apparently they are visiting us as they are thinking about settling here on our plane, and that they are coming here peacefully. During these visits they are also said to have technology that would destroy any sort of attack made on them, so it is advised that if they do make themselves visible to us, we do not attack or make them feel threatened. I'm not so sure about this one but at the end of the day, I am certainly no student of esoteric matters, so maybe it's just something that my brain cannot comprehend with the knowledge I currently have. In our number 6 spot today we have this UFO footage. This UFO footage is coming from another anonymous video which claims that real UFO footage is always censored, and that this video has been previously censored, but they were here to expose the truth. It is unclear where this UFO video was taken, and at the end of the day, I'm no expert in debunking these things, so so it's tough to say whether or not it's real, but let's all just take a look and you can judge for yourselves. I know that wasn't the most exciting video, but what do we think aliens are going to be doing if they really are visiting us? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that this video is really showing some sort of UFO, and if you do, do you think it's aliens or just some sort of secret project that we aren't privy to? Coming into number 5 we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding alien corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I 
don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise. But I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favourite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like, where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak confirms. Allegedly, anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Carrie thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it, and he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like it's been photoshopped today. If Kodak did call this authentic, I haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and and Clark Gable. Two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just like like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft, or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U-2 spy plane and the SR-71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the Rumored Aurora Project. So, so, what is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A-12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah, when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed that the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images 
images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time? Do you think it really was a spy plane that crashed, or given the response, something much more sensitive? Number 10. Nighttime Operations On November 15, 2020, well known YouTube videographers Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers channel took an interesting clip shot from outside the restricted Nevada Test and Training Range, or the NTTR. The new video shows some common NTTR activity, including the camo dude, security personnel, the comings and goings of NTTR employee shuttles, and more interestingly, a lot of air activity over the region, especially at night. The video showed what is most likely a significant nighttime special operations tactical training exercise or capabilities tested at the Nevada Test and Training Range. Most interestingly, the scene appears to be lit by a series of LUU 19 BB infrared air dropped illumination flares for use with night vision devices. The video was 20 minutes long and shows a series of bright lights at low altitude as viewed through their infrared night vision video equipment. Visible in the video are a series of orbiting lights around the brighter descending lights. About specific tests and training activities inside the NTTR don't surface often, the US Air Force published an article on October 24, 2020, saying operations on the Nevada test and training range are continuous. When one operation finishes, another is right behind it, ready to begin. The couple also caught a video of security vehicles and a large bus leaving the gated area distantly adjacent from where the action in their video took place. Now, it's impossible to tell what's actually going on exclusively from the video, but whatever it was, it was big and it looked interesting. All right, so this next photo is of Jerry Freeman uh, taken on a forbidden trip back in 1997. And his head here is supposedly covering the area where the secret S4 hangars are, according to the legendary Bob Lazar. So this guy had uh, quite the adventure uh, close to the forbidden military base. And according to him, he was actually within the restricted area at points, but uh, the exact borders of Area 51 aren't really shared with the public. So what's the story with this guy? Jerry Freeman, an archeologist, decided in 1997 that he was going to embark on a seven day trek into the highly restricted Nevada test site. The funny thing is about this case though, is that he really had no interest in what most of us would want to see behind the Area 51 curtain. Uh, he was just interested in tracing back the trail of the lost 49ers pioneers who had traversed the area in 1849. He was in search of an inscription made by one of the pioneers, which was believed to be a Nye Canyon above Papoose Lake on the Nellis Air Force Base, totally off limits. Freeman spent days avoiding security, he slept with nothing but a blanket and the clothes on his back. He traveled very light, too light, he was running out of water by the end. And the funny thing is, is that after this dangerous trek, people were asking him like, so did you see Area 51? What's in there? Where are the UFOs, man? And again, just had no interest in that side of it. So he was like, uh, I think at one point I, I might have seen Area 51. Uh, he like climbed on a ridge above Nye Canyon looking down on Papu's Dry Lake, which is just south of Area 51. And he was like, uh, yeah, during the day I didn't see much, but one night I saw some lights. One looked like it was coming from a security vehicle. One was kind of stationary, but it seemed to grow and like shrink in size. Could have been a, a hangar door opening and closing. I don't know, it's an interesting kind of case. Number eight, Codename Hood. A book by Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base, Little Brown, tells the story of the famous site that has spurred tales and rumors of intrigue and cover ups. Annie dove through thousands of recently declassified documents to reveal what happened in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s at the government restricted area near Groom Lake, Nevada. In the book, there were some photos, and for this one, Annie said, the black device attacked attached to this balloon in Area 9 of the Nevada test site is a 74 kiloton atomic bomb codenamed Hood, the largest atmospheric nuclear weapon ever exploded in the United States. Standing on a ladder minutes before this photograph was taken on July 5th, 1957, Al O'Donnell put the final touches on the bomb firing system. Area 51 is over the hill to the right of the device, and on the next page and photo, Anne wrote a column of radioactive smoke rises from the Hood bomb. To the right of the mushroom stem, the landscape can be seen on fire. Approximately one hour after the bomb went off, security guard Richard Migas drove through Ground Zero to set up a guard post at the Area 51 guard gate directly over the burning hills. 
Next up, we have the Boyd Bushman photos. So Boyd Bushman is no longer with us, but he took with him to his grave many tales of the extraterrestrial friends he met as a Lockheed Martin engineer working within Area 51. At least that's what he claimed. In 2007, Bushman was filmed in a video talking with independent aerospace engineer Mark Q. Patterson about his experiences in the restricted area, claiming to have met several aliens, some of whom were hundreds of years old, apparently, and hailed from planet Quintumnia, even said some of these Quintumniums were employees of Area 51. Held up a bunch of photographs. The video became relatively big, but I gotta say, call me crazy, these pictures look not great. That alien looks like it's from Spirit Halloween. Nothing against Spirit Halloween. I go every Halloween, but uh, not the most convincing. I think Boyd knew he was on the outs. He died not long after this interview, and I, I think he wanted to go with a little bit of a prank. Can't blame him. In fact, I respect him for it. Number six, Gabe Zeffman. Gabe Zeffman, a private pilot and amateur photographer, spent Christmas Day 2020 flying his Senesa 150 plane over Area 51 and snapping just over 1,000 photos. He captured stunning visuals of the Nevada Test and Training Range and Area 51, showing a mysterious triangle shape inside an open hangar. The hangar is just south of the main NTTR complex at Area 51, and the object looks large, although it is unclear. It does appear to be the the only hangar that's open as well. In the videos of his flights posted on YouTube, Gabe can be heard getting clearance for his route over the restricted area. Now for this particular flight, he had higher quality photography gear that allowed him to capture better photos. So what's in the hangar? Seems like we may never know. In our number 5 spot today, we have Perseverance. A point that was made in the video is something that we are actually now watching happen in real time, and that is the mission to Mars for the Perseverance rover that is currently there digging around in the soil. The video stated that Mars may hold signs of an ancient environment that may have been favorable to microbial life. Well, that is exactly true, and the reason the rover is there at all. The Perseverance rover launched from Earth on July 30th, 2020, and made an incredible and successful landing on Mars on February 18th, 2020. While the rover has provided us with some incredible high definition photos of the red planet which truly are incredible to look at, its main objective is to dig around and search for ancient signs of life, collecting rock and soil samples for a possible return to Earth for further research. While Mars' thin atmosphere is unable to shield the planet from the high amounts of radiation coming from space now, it is thought that the atmosphere did once act as a better shield and that the environment of Mars may have once been a great host for life, which is exactly exactly why this mission is so important. While when the anonymous video was first released, we were still a ways away from the Perseverance mission taking place, it's really cool to see how it has come to fruition and it's exciting to see the new photos and discoveries that are made each day. In our number 4 spot today we have UFO footage part 2. We have to include just one more video of what is claimed to be proof of aliens visiting us on Earth before we get back into the more sciencey top 3 points. This is another video that was uploaded by a member of anonymous and it comes from 2017. The video features a dark sky, but it shows what looks like some sort of aircraft with a few flashing lights, and it seems like it is able to basically just hover there. Not long after the video starts, another mysterious UFO seemingly joins the first one, and the two are just seen floating there. What do you guys think these could be? I obviously don't know what an alien aircraft would look like, so it's tough to say if this is a realistic example or not. All I know is that if this isn't someone playing a trick and they really saw this in the sky, I have no other possible explanations of what it could be. In our number 3 spot today we have Trappist1. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. One of the things Anonymous mentioned in the video was a nearby star called Trappist1. The video didn't go into too much detail detail about this, but I'm here to do that now so we can all know what they were talking about. While Trappist-1 is a star, the revelation that the video spoke about was that this star has an entire solar system of Earth-like planets. This discovery first came in 2017 and upon further research, in 2018 it was revealed that some of the planets just may harbour even more water than Earth does. Some of the planets are a little too close to the star, so the water is more atmospheric water vapour. The ones in the middle have liquid water, like us and the furthest ones have ice. TRAPPIST-1 is now the most thoroughly known planetary system apart from ours, which is 
kinda cool. While the anonymous video made it seem like there was a full blown advanced alien civilization living in this solar system, there still might be potential for some form of microbial life that we just haven't quite found yet. And that is very cool. In our number 2 spot today we have Enceladus. If you had heard of Enceladus before the anonymous video, there's a good chance you knew it as basically an icy snowball floating around in space. Or perhaps you simply knew it as a small moon of Saturn with a diameter of 502 kilometers. But as it turns out, this small moon might hold some pretty amazing potential. It was discovered that this moon has hydrothermal processes going on underneath its crust. To us non-scientists that means next to nothing, but what if I said that means that it just might have all of the requirements for life, and that it is becoming a greater possibility that we might find microbial life there. Basically this moon has an icy shell for a surface and then a rocky interior, but between those two layers is a warm ocean, and this ocean is where scientists think the life is most likely to be. This discovery came almost accidentally when the Cassini orbiter arrived to Saturn in 2005, and it found water plumes shooting out of the cracks in the surface of the moon, which made scientists realize that it just may be geologically active. Through more research and by flying the orbiter through the water, by the time 2015 rolled around, scientists knew that it was holding all of the keys to life. While this little moon was never the original focus of research, it quickly took over with its incredibly exciting potential. In our number one spot today we have Europa. We've got another moon to talk about that was mentioned in the video that also just might be holding the keys to us finding alien life. But this time we're taking it over to Jupiter and its icy moon Europa. Europa has been a point of interest for a while after NASA's Galileo Jupiter probe in the 1990s revealed an unusually warm spot in Europa's cold surface. In March of 2014, the Hubble telescope detected what scientists thought might be a plume of water vapor, but the caution turned to cautious excitement and optimism in February of 2016 when the telescope caught another, much larger plume in the same spot. This has led to the creation of the Europa Clipper mission. While this mission doesn't yet have a set date, it will see an orbiter flying to Europa to fly through these plumes in an attempt to see what they are made out of, similar to the one we just talked about, to see if it really is holding the key to life, or maybe even life itself. One of the scientists on the Clipper mission, Robert Papalardo, explained that if there is life on Europa, it almost certainly was completely independent from the origin of life on Earth. That would mean the origin of life must be pretty easy throughout the galaxy and beyond. Number 10, James Webb and the Big Bang. Okay, here we go. We'll kick off with some recent news. The James Webb Space Telescope has, of course, been blowing our minds casually for a couple years now. Since his departure up into space back in 2021, James Webb Space Telescope has been showing us these beautiful displays that we never dreamt of ever seeing. Stars so faint and so far away that until this point, well, we had no idea they were even there. For example, last week, the James Webb Space Telescope telescope found new, well rather old, galaxies that look like tiny red spots. Now by analyzing the light emitted by these galaxies, astronomers can conclude that these galaxies were born 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. Now these galaxies shouldn't be this old this far away considering they were born so soon after the Big Bang. Doesn't make any sense, shouldn't be there, shouldn't be that old. It's like seeing your grandma younger than you somehow. You're like, that's, no, timeline wise, that shouldn't make any sense. What in the Avengers is going on? Are these aliens before the Big Bang? We have no idea, this is a week ago. Comment your thoughts down below. I think it's aliens for sure. Number nine, ancient Sumerians. All right, we'll go old, but not as old as that red dot. The Mesopotamian civilization was formed in what's now Iraq and Kuwait. Now these civilizations began around the Neolithic revolution, so somewhere around 12, thousand BCE. Now they're sometimes referred to as the cradle of civilization because of course they're old. Mesopotamia was one of the first places to develop agriculture, being right in the middle of Egyptian and the Indus Valley civilizations. And of course we have to mention these ancient Sumerian tablets. Now in these tablets we start to question history. In 1842, British archaeologist Austin Henry Layard covered ruins of this royal archive, thousands of tablets made of clay, the world's oldest overdue library books, pretty much. Now these tablets showed Sumerians engaging in a social night with a scene that depicts a banquet from around 26,000 BC. It was the world's first bender, actually, if I'm being historically accurate. Ancient gods of Mesopotamia were said to have wings and the ability to control all of humanity. These gods were eight feet tall, or they could have been aliens from another planet. We Again, we don't know. Could be gods, could be aliens, could be neither. Drawings of a very tall man, like me, who knows. The Sumerians wrote one of the oldest tales in human history. It's called the Epic of Gilgamesh. So maybe these alien gods inspired them. 
and inspired literature. Who knows? I'd probably write a book if eight foot tall winged gods landed on my crops for sure. I'd write a journal or two. Number eight, the Madonna with Saint Giovanni. All right, going back to some art for this one. In our history, even in our ancient history, there have been writings and paintings of the, well, potential extraterrestrial variety. As one example shows, the 15th century painting, the Madonna with the Saint Giovanni, depicts the Virgin Mary. But also in the background of this painting, features some sort of hovering disc-like object that looks, well, it looks a lot like a UFO, no? I don't know, I can't really describe this. This isn't the only example, however, as we've seen other sorts of otherworldly beings in ancient cave paintings and other Sanskrit scrolls. There are even some people who swear that it's also written in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, aliens are pretty OG. It certainly says something that potential alien sightings have existed since, well, that far back in our human history, so it must either point to proof of alien existence or just humans being obsessed with conspiracies of alien existence. I'm on the latter side. I really want aliens to be real, but I don't think so. I don't know. Number seven, the Nazca Lions. We've all heard of alien crop circles at one point or another. I remember watching the movie Signs when I was younger and well, then I couldn't sleep for 28 years. That's awesome. That birthday party scene? Never again. Thank you so much. Yeah, that scene. Remember that one? So scary, right? Aliens. Just 200 miles southeast of Peru, we can find hundreds of markings etched into the earth. Now they're massive pieces of art, almost like crop circles, but you know, without the farming stuff. More intimidating, more, you know, stone. The biggest ground graffiti spans over 1,200 feet, and you've probably seen it. Hopefully not. Many believe that this was an ancient ritual for water, given its location. Well, that theory certainly checks out. Another theory written in 1968 in Eric Von Daniken's book, Chariot of the Gods, suggests that ancient Nazca Lines was a site for ancient alien visitors. Like a landing pad, almost. Airport, there it is, one of those. Leaving behind knowledge in the form of these massive doodles and, well, technology. Number six, the USS Nimitz. All right, I couldn't imagine a worse place to find alien life than in the middle of the ocean. Ugh, that's creepy. Although I will argue that an octopus is completely alien. That's messed up. They shouldn't exist. November 2004, the USS Princeton is a part of the USS Nimitz strike group, and they noted this craft, a UFO, a UAP rather. That's what they're calling them now, UAP. Now at first they saw this craft not in the sky, but under the sea, which is interesting because the go fast video that we've always been looking at with that thing whipping through the air seems like it's coming from the ocean. The ocean is very unexplored, so there could be a plethora of aliens just waiting down there. Who knows? I certainly hope not, but who knows? A few moments later, this white tic-tac shaped alien craft came out of the water and a white tic-tac shaped UAP, always egg shaped in history, that's always a fun sign. Then two FA-18 fighter jets were flying above it. And as early reports put the egg 80,000 feet above the water, so of course that's when they had to fly in. They saw it fly up, whip through the air, and then again, they saw it dip into the ocean with no exhaust, no infrared, didn't pick up anything, nothing like that at all. It just shot away at three times the speed of sound. Loop, underwater, gone. Can aliens go underwater too? That's a little bit OP, it's not fair. Number five, the alien interview. So there's actually footage of this one, so yeah, not really photos, but I mean, isn't video better than a a silly old still photograph anyway. This footage was shown in a 1997 documentary entitled Area 51, The Alien Interview. And the big selling point here was that you were gonna see real footage of Area 51 employees in the S4 facility communicating with an extraterrestrial on camera. The man behind the film, simply known as Victor, narrates through the footage claiming to be former Area 51 employee and whistleblower who copied the footage which was taken in 1989 before for setting out to share it with the world. So you don't hear what was actually being said in the video. There's no sound other than the mysterious Victor re relaying the information over the footage, but you do see what looks to be your classic gray alien moving around and opening and closing its mouth. I mean, if it was just a puppet, there was definitely some effort put in here. And by that, I just mean they tried to make it look like it was moving. Number four, closest photos of the base ever. In 2017, Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers, who was mentioned before, hiked up the 1.4 mile high Tikaboo Peak, a mountain 25 miles opposite the mysterious military base, in order to capture the closest ever pictures of Area 51. From the peak of this mountain, the duo of UFO hunters used a special telescopic lenses to get the clearest photographs of the buildings and vehicles inside the top secret government site. The Area 51 pictures taken show what looks like a water tower, several complexes and vehicles moving around. Next up we have the UFO. In December of 2019, Nevada resident Steve Barron shared pictures and video of this mysterious object flying over a mountain range close to his home. So whatever the object is, 
looks big. It's far off in the distance, but it's very noticeable, very bright. Definitely doesn't look like the small specks you get in the sky with satellites. It's super bright again, and it moves in a strange pattern too. It doesn't move at one consistent speed or in one single direction. That's uh, There's a point where it kind of looks like it could be a satellite. It's moving through the sky in more of a traditional pattern, just straight across. But then it stops starts moving back in the direction it was coming from and seems to clip along at a good speed too. Like whatever this thing is, it's fast. So I don't know, could be a drone, I suppose, but you be the judge. Number two, the aircraft. A passing commercial satellite seemed to have snapped its top secret next generation combat aircraft on the tarmac of Area 51. Tyler Rogaway of the War Zone was reviewing Planet Lab satellite photos on of the high profile secret site when he spotted something outside the ordinary. The highly classified United States Air Force Nevada testing facility is usually especially careful. Air operations are timed out during the gaps between Earth observation and surveillance satellites satellite overpasses. But in this photo, on the taxiway leading through a massive new hangar was a strange shadow. It appears to be a translucent tent. Inside is the outline of what appears to be an unknown type of fighter aircraft. Area 51 is always a popular spot when it comes to publicly available satellite imagery, Tyler wrote. When glancing at daily 3 meter resolution images of the base, we noticed the appearance of a roughly delta shaped blob on the north apron of the large southern hangar. It stayed there between January 26 and 20 29th, 2022. So what was it? Why did they make this mistake? I don't know. Next up, we have the Area 51 entrance. So a few years back, satellite photos were shared online showing what looked to be a possible entrance to the ever elusive wonder that is Area 51. Someone was cruising around on Google Earth and spotted a road leading to a parking lot by the foothills of a mountain. Now, whatever this road leading to this parking lot uh, was actually built for, it wasn't there back in 1998, where satellite images of the same area showed there to be no road leading to this dead end area with the parking lot. So what's going on? It is pretty strange. Why have all these roads been built leading to a parking lot in seemingly dead end areas by the side of a mountain? There's, there's nothing there. It's not like, you know, they'd park there and then walk all the way back down the road to go somewhere else. Else. No, it seems as if there's a secret tunnel that's been carved into the side of the mountain. I think Bob Lazar said something about uh, some mountain facility in Area 51. As for what's going on in there, your guess is as good as mine. Mm -hmm. 